Hi, welcome to the final episode of Project Spark Alphabet. I'm Lady Lex UK and we've got to the letter Z finally, uh, or Z if you're uh, in the US. Uh, and for my prop today, I have chosen uh, ZG Lug's capsule. And for my brain tile, I have chosen to make a sleeping mechanic. So let's start off with uh, our prop today. And if you have seen uh, my tutorial on tentacles, you will notice um, I'm using the same prop. Uh, but today we're going to make uh, a prop using the uh, spring here. The idea is to have things springing up. Um, even though uh, we don't have the option to use this spring on its own and we only have it in this prop, it can be quite useful and you can make things that uh, appear to be on a spring. So let's see what I've built. So I'll start off, I have a like a futuristic looking egg thing here. I press B and it springs open. I press B again and it will shut, open, shut. And here I have a crate, which has a jack-in-the-box in it. And over here, uh, I've got a skull that pops in and out of this asteroid. So let's see how that's done. Okay, so this prop here, um, this is what it looks like when it's powered on. Uh, when it's powered off, it just... Um, it doesn't move backwards and forwards like this so you could create a pendulum using this for a clock for something like that uh, make this invisible but uh, I want to be able to see the spring and um, so I've used these two separate parts of the prop to make this egg and um, all I've done here is I've got um, an ordinary one here with its power on and this egg shape here and I've used a power link. Now, if you're not familiar with the power link, it's here. Um, it's exactly the same as an attach. So you click on the object you want to power from, and then click on the object you want to power to. And what that does is, it means that if this has its power, then so does this. And if this doesn't have power, then neither does this. That's how it works. That's a power link. And I've used this, this uh, power link in, in all of my props here uh, to create these pop-up effects. Uh, now this isn't a real pop-up effect. This is just a trick of the uh, trick of the eye. So uh, in his brain here, it says when you interact, we're going to toggle the power, and when it has power, we're going to set the visibility to be false, and visibility to be true when it uh, doesn't have power, and the opposite is true for this capsule. So what we're doing is we're toggling the visibility between this one and this one, and it gives the effect of it opening up even though it's not happening. Your brain fills in the gaps, if you like. You are seeing two completely separate images, but your brain expects it to pop up. So that's what you see. So it's, it's a sort of optical illusion uh, that is used in animation all the time. Uh, our crate, uh, this doesn't use movement at all. This is going to um, use a different mechanic entirely. Um, if you look at Project Spark Alphabet W, I'll show you how to make the hinged box. But let's have a look at um, our Jack in the Box itself. So we have the crate here with a power link to both the hinge and to our teddy bear Jack in the Box. And in its brain, it says it just toggle interact has power. And I make it a one shot deal. So it says when it does not have power, and you interact with it, then it will toggle has power. Uh, you, it won't do it again. It's a one shot deal. You could design this so that it would close uh, close again if you interacted with it, but I've just done the uh, the first part. So here is our, our, our jack, and it says when has power, we'll make it visible. Now the reason I've got this visible and invisible is because the position I had it in the crate. Uh, meant that you could just see these little ears sticking out the top and I didn't want that so he, I've made him invisible when he's inside the box and the lid is shut. Then for half a second he's going to grow and I've used percentage here, percent six. Else visible equals false and that's it. So the, he instead of uh, popping out he actually grows larger and it gives the effect that he's popping out of the box. 
Now this one over here on the other hand, this does use movement. Now, this actually is popping in and out. So I've got my asteroid here and as you can see it's got a, a trigger zone uh, sensor in front of it. And in its brain it says when the player is in the trigger zone we're going to power on, otherwise we're going to power off. And as before we're going to power link with the power link to our capsule. You'll also notice there is a logic cube that's attached to our asteroid. This is going to be the position of where uh, we want our skull to pop up to. So you can put that anywhere you like. And in the capsule brain it says once vector variable start equals position. So we're going to um, set a vector variable uh, at its starting position and this is where we're going to raise and lower our skull from and it will always go back to this starting position here. When it has power, so when the asteroid has been interacted with, we're going to set our visibility to be true. And then we're going to start raising up our skull. So what I've got here is uh, until the position Y is greater than or equal to the logic cube's position Y, then position Y incremented by 0.15. And you can change that speed um, by changing that number. So you can make it pop up slower or faster, depending on what you want it to do. Then you've got else, so when it doesn't have power, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to decrease by 0.15 until it gets back to our start position. Once it's got back to its start position, or within it, it's, it might go less depending on the decrement number that you've used. Uh, if you use a, an uneven number, uh, a number that it won't divide by, uh, then you might have this, this issue. So stop that. It's going to then set its position back to the start position. So it's definitely back to where it was supposed to be. And then we're going to set this vis visibility back to false. And in our skull, which is attached, it's just got an ordinary attachment to the, um, uh, to the capsule. And uh, that just says when the owner is visible, then I'm visible, otherwise I'm not visible. That way, oh, this attachment is going, otherwise you would see the skull, regardless of whether the uh, capsule was visible or not. So you have to make sure that it's the same. And there you go. There we have our pop-up. And that's really good if you're making like an, um, an animatronic uh, amusement ride or something like that so you can have sensors um so when your player gets close to a thing you can have a, a jump scare and you can make that a lot faster than i've made that skull uh for, for a jump scare uh, effect there we go right then our sleep mechanic here i have uh two uh wandering villagers and i've put uh some code in their brains to make them go to sleep so let's turn his brain on and we'll turn his brain on okay so let's uh let's have a look right they're all asleep and after 10 seconds they're going to wake up There we go. Now you can see one of them woke up with a special effect and the other one didn't. Right, so what have I done? How have I done it? Okay, dokie. let's move our villager, our player character over so we can see them collapse in the first place. So let's do this again then. As you can see, one of them travelled an awful lot further. One just fell to the ground, the other one just like spun and fell off, fell backwards. That is because the one at the back there is using a uh, death animation, while the one at the front is using a fall down animation. You could also make your own connect animation for sleep if you wish. Uh, it is entirely up to you, though I think the fall down and the, uh, the death one is probably your best option for this. Right. Now then, how does this work? So let's have a look at it in his brain. So it says, when is dead, sleeping equals true. 
else sleeping equals false. We're going to set his destroy after death to be false. And when he first, uh, he first spawns, his health is going to be zero. And that will allow him to do his, his, or to his death animation immediately. When sleeping, countdown timer of 10 seconds, and then we're gonna set his health back to the maximum health and he'll revive and he'll walk about. Now, the problem with this, of course, is if um, you wanted this character to be killed in, a, in another way, instead of being killed, he would actually just fall asleep and then revive again uh, 10 seconds later. That actually might be good for your mechanic, but it, it may not. Uh, also, you might want your character to remain sleeping for a long time and not never wake up. Maybe um, it's just a scene and you want uh, your character to, to be asleep. It's not a problem. Um, obviously, this code in his brain uh, will make him revive. Um, but uh, uh, that you don't have to have that. You can just remove uh, this and he'll never revive. He'll just stay, uh, stay dead uh, throughout. So we'll just do that. We'll remove that remove that particular line so he won't revive and um, you're probably wondering about the special effect well it's in this cube this cube says for each of all objects if it is sleeping play the effects of the sleep aura at the position of its head position so it checks uh, to see if uh, any player has the sleeping boolean turned to true and if it does it's going to play a special effect so you don't have to put the special effect in every single um, player brain. It's, it's here. Um, and so if a player uh, is uh, put to sleep, then it's just going to find and um, put the, the sleep emote, regardless of how uh, you put them to sleep, as long as it's using that Boolean. Now, if we go into test mode, there, he's dead. And he's never going to revive now. He's just dead. You notice he's in a slightly different position than he was before. You've got not got much of a guarantee sometimes um, with uh, these things about where they're going to fall and where they're going to land, which might be a problem, especially if you want them in a bed. So the better way to do this is actually just take all of it out of his brain. Go into... Uh, sorry, go into combat... Go to health and defences, put his starting health to zero, and destroy after death to off in there. And now you have a dead body that you can move about. And you can position this wherever you want. And when it starts the game, this is where he's going to be. Like so. So I can move him like that and stick him on that bed. Um, I can rotate him round like that so he's facing down. You can slightly tilt the, the character. Let me just see if I can tilt, tilt the character like that and then maneuver him so he looks like he's actually under the bedclothes there, like that. There we go. There's things you can do with your dead character, which you can't do. Um, it's much, much harder to do it if you've got it in code in his brain because you're not 100% sure where he's going to land. So if you've got a character that you just want to, uh, in a scene in the background there and they're sleeping, this is the way, this is the best way to do it in my opinion, because it's very difficult to position uh, a character uh, that's got some animation in test mode. And I'll show you uh, now with, with, the, with a new mechanic. So this is the, um, the one that I've used Instead of killing my character, I'm just going to use the emote of fall down. Because the emote of fall down, he falls down, then he stands back up again. We don't want him to stand up straight away. So what we do is we set the pace to be zero. After one second, so he falls down, and then we'll set the pace to zero. So he will no longer move, he won't get up, and we'll set sleeping to be true at that point. And then after a countdown of 10, in, instead of reviving our character, we're going to set the pace back to one and we'll set our sleeping to false. Now, the, the other advantage of using fall down rather than revive is you don't get the special effect when they wake up. 
because with revive you get that revised special effect and there's nothing you can do about that that is a fixed thing uh, he's stuck with it but the disadvantages of using this is um, I can't is it's, it's very difficult to place this character so that he's uh, going to be sleeping on the bed so if I let me let me see now he's gonna fall down so I want him on the bed so he's gonna fall forwards like that so you would think that would work so let's try it and see into test mode uh, and he's missed um, and he's sort of inside the sleeping bag and it's very difficult to judge it it is very very difficult to judge it um, so now I'm going to show you a mechanic um, for your player for sleeping here I have a bed I'm going to interact with the bed my character's fallen asleep on the bed and I moved well if I don't move it's going to go through a day and night cycle there we go so if I move now he'll wake up and now it's night time so I can wander around let's go back into the bed And you'll notice that he gets into a position so he sort of jumps on the bed from a height. Yeah, I'll just move my stick. There we go. I've woken up and it's evening. There we go. Let's have a look at that mechanic. So as you can see, I've got a, um, a logic cube above my bed here. Now this is what I have through trial and error worked out where my player needs to be in order to collapse and fall onto the bed. It has to be at a height, otherwise it goes through the bed. Or in, you know, you, you can only get it so, so that he's lying on top of the bed. It, trying to get the angle and everything, it's really, really difficult. So once you've got it, um, uh, by using this logic cube, moving this logic cube about until you get it into the correct position so he can fall on the bed, then you've got it made and you can make loads of these beds. But it is a, it is a pain to to try and get to work so this is just a logic cube to, to affect the position here is the code in the bed when not occupied uh, you can interact with the bed and then occupied equals true uh, sleeper equals it so we set an object variable called sleeper and that is going to be our player and then we're going to set our sleepers boolean sleeping equals true when the sleeper is sleeping, we're going to do a countdown timer of two in frames. And then if you press any button, then we're going to wake up our player. So wake up boolean equals true. Countdown timer, sleeper pace equals zero. So he's going to stay down using that fall down emote. So he starts to sleeper position equals the logic cube position. Then sleeper forward equals the logic cube forward, so he's facing the right way. Then sleeper emote fall down. And then we're going to power on our logic cube over on the right hand side there, which is our day to night timer. And then that's using uh, Tomb Dakota's code for uh, day and night cycle. You just pop that in that logic cube uh, and then uh, you change it slightly so that it will uh, it will turn on. Then when wake up is true, we're going to turn that day night cycle off. We set our sleepers pace back to one, set the sleepers boolean sleeping to false. We'll say the bed is no longer occupied and wake up is false. And here is our day night cycle. So when it has power, we're gonna set duration five loop and we're going to change all the sun and everything else is the same as it is in the uh, brain. But we want it to go all the way through this loop. So we make sure that it says sky equals morning clear. Then if it's this, then if it's that, and it will go through this loop. I'm just showing you the code. 
there's some slight changes from uh, the actual code that Team Dakota gave us, but not, not very much. There you go. So there you have a sleeping mechanic that will affect the, the time of day. Obviously, you don't need to do that. You don't need to uh, power on this. You could just have him sleeping in that bed, um, just sleeping in the bed. It doesn't actually have to affect time at all. But um, this is a, a mechanic that you use in Quest RPGs quite a lot, especially if you need to be, it needs to be a nighttime thing that everything changes at night and you need to find a bed to get to nighttime quickly. This is exactly the sort of mechanic people like to use. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching the Project Spark Alphabet. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and if you've got any ideas for the sort of thing that you would like me to produce for my channel, please let me know. Thanks for watching and keep sparking.